What happens when AI stops answering questions and starts actually doing things? I mean, becoming our coworker. And the real question is what actually has to be true for AI to become a real coworker in the first place? Microsoft just published an article called What's Next in AI? Seven Trends to Watch in 2026. And this article is not hype. It really dives into research. It's a roadmap, if you will, for how AI moves from a tool to a partner. So I sat down with Peter Lee, who is the president of Microsoft Research, to understand what sits underneath all of these trends and what they really mean in practice for both you and I. Okay, trend number one, AI will amplify what people can achieve together. This is the first trend Microsoft calls out. And I think it's really key because it's not AI replacing individuals, but AI amplifying what people can do together. So when I was talking to Peter, I asked him, if AI is supposed to help teams, why does it still feel like a solo chatbot? Agents are definitely a really hot topic. Um, and you know, when you hear the word agent, it, it makes you think of something that's autonomous, that can kind of operate on its own. Okay, that sounds right, until you think about how work actually happens. So one thing about agents is if you think about a chatbot engaged in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, one human being with one AI. But of course, that's not how we operate. Team conversations, we work in groups, AI systems can do that also. That's the gap. If AI is going to amplify teams, it can't behave like a one-on-one -on -one assistant. Now, if you work on teams, which is most of us, this means AI won't live in a chat window. It'll live between your tools, your coworkers, and your workflow. Which brings us to trend number two. AI agents will get new safeguards as they join the workforce. Now, Microsoft's second trend is really about agents joining the workforce and the safeguards that suddenly become non-negotiable. So I wanted to find out if multiple AIs are working together, how do you keep that reliable? I mean, all working seamlessly together. When you want like a bunch of AIs working together or an AI working with a bunch of people or a bunch of AIs working with a bunch of people, the question is how do you orchestrate all of that? That word matters. That's why we say use the word orchestration. One big thing that uh, we've provided as open source to the world is a system called AutoGen, a system that allows you to orchestrate a bunch of AI agents and human beings to work on problems together. But coordination alone isn't a safeguard. So I wanted to push further. What actually makes these systems more trustworthy? One of the things that's really been surprising to me is when you have agents, is you get more reliability. Like the simplest multi-agent setup is to have two AIs. One AI tries to solve the problem that you're trying to figure out. And the other AI, you could call it the challenger, or I call it the curmudgeon. It's just disagreeable and it's been trained to just like not believe anything from anybody and is always asking for more proof. That's a safeguard, not a rule, but a built-in skeptic. And for anyone building or relying on AI systems, this is a really big shift. Reliability won't come from smarter answers. It will come from better checks. Now, going into trend number three, Microsoft is making a really big claim here, which is AI could help close gaps in global healthcare. So when I was speaking to Peter, I asked him, what happens when the stakes are real? And there isn't just one right answer, especially in the world of healthcare. In medical diagnosis, you know, you have like one AI agent that talks to the patient and asks questions, comes up with hypotheses on what might be wrong. But then you have a challenger agent. I don't believe you. How do you know that? Uh, come up with more proof. And then you can have another agent that says, well, you know, let's not put this patient through too much stuff. Now, that's not AI replacing doctors. That's AI acting like a team of specialists, questioning, debating, which I found very interesting, and balancing risk. Medicine is not an exact science. It's very common for three different doctors to not agree, you know, what's going on, and they have to debate a little bit. Or, you know, a nephrologist might have a different diagnosis than an endocrinologist or a cardiologist. So shrinking the health gap isn't about certainty. It's about structured disagreement, but at scale. Okay, for trend number four, I found this to be a really fascinating trend that really highlights that AI won't just assist research. Instead, it will become central to how discovery happens. So it brings up another question though, how far can agents really go? Come up with a hypothesis, design an experiment, figure out how to run the experiment, work with a whole bunch of people and AIs to run that experiment, analyze the results of the experiment, see if it matches up with your hypothesis, and if not, 
revise it. And that whole loop? That's not a tool. That's participation in the scientific method. Now, one trend Microsoft calls out that matters more than I think people even really realize is AI infrastructure isn't just about getting bigger. It's about getting smarter. So if you're building with AI, this means efficiency and orchestration, and it will matter much more or as much as raw model capability. The winners here won't just have the best models, they'll have the best systems underneath. Now, trend number six is AI is learning the language of code and the context context behind it. So this is another trend that is about AI really understanding code in context, not just autocomplete. So for developers, this means AI that understands why code exists, not what exactly it does. It goes past the what and goes into the why. I mean, think repository level reasoning, not snippet level help. All right, and the last trend, trend number seven, is the next leap in computing is much closer than people think. Microsoft says the next leap in computing is closer than it looks. So you don't need to understand quantum computing to feel its impact. That is key as well. But you do need to understand that AI is evolving alongside new hardware, not separately from it. And I think we're going to see a lot of that in 2026, is AI merged with hardware and some really interesting innovations coming out of that. So what though does this mean for you, for you and I? I mean, for one, it means the most valuable skill in the AI era won't be talking to models. It'll be knowing what to delegate, what to verify, and what to keep human because AI in 2026 isn't becoming human and it's not even about that. It's about becoming organizational. And the systems that win in work, research, and everyday life will be built on two things, orchestration and action. All right, if you enjoyed this video, going into deep dives about what trending tech is coming up, make sure to leave in the comments other topics you want me to cover and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.